Hi, I'm Jillian Walter with SCM Connections, and today I'll be talking to you about some of the new functionalities within the IBP 2008 update. The first one we'll be talking about is the new weighted average calculation found within the web UI. This new calculation makes it more user friendly and diminishes the number of steps it takes to find the weighted averages for any desired key figure. By simply using the IBP weighted average function here, you just have to put in your numerator, your denominator, and whether or not you want the numerator to be a stored or calculated numerator. Once you've created this new key figure, I named ours price weighted average just to keep it clear. You can head into IBP within Excel and pull up a new planning view. Here I've compared both weighted average price and the planned price. So we're expecting it to be around 300. However, you can see here, the actual weighted average was almost 600. This can tell us that a lot more of the more expensive products were sold as compared to the lower priced products. It puts more emphasis on the products that sold more units and therefore has a higher weighted average price. As compared to products, this product below, you can see that a lot more of the cheaper ones were sold. The weighted average price calculation allows us to more quickly find these numbers and better compare our planned price or average price versus the weighted average price to see what the true average of the price per unit could be along with any other key figures that we may want to dive into. The next new update I'll be talking about is the end-to-end -end visibility that can now be found within Intelligent Visibility web app within the web UI. The main new update here is that we can now add on a key figure data layer as opposed to just alerts or the supply chain network. Once this data layer is selected, you can now come over to time periods and key figures. For time periods, I'll just go back a few years, make sure we get enough data in here. And for selecting key figures, check out the consensus demand quantity. For key figures, you can select up to 10 different key figures to be included. However, only one will actually show up on the data map. The default is the first key figure that you were to select. So if I were to select a few more key figures, the only one that would actually show up on the data map is this consensus demand plan quantity. Next, just press go to update the data map below and it can show you all the different demand in your different locations. In order to see this much information, I included all of the locations and all of our products. You can also sort your key figure data by selecting only positive or negative values. Lastly, in order to go more granular into a specific location, just select the green bubble or red bubble that you'd like to look into and hit this button, show more details. And over here, it'll pop up any charts that may be more specific to that location or DC or warehouse that you want to know more about. This helps you dive deeper into each location and key figure. This new functionality allows you to better understand different key figures based upon location or product ID numbers. It just helps you to find more individual information if you're looking for that within a very user-friendly way. IBP's new calculation of coverage helps you to determine how far out in advance your current safety stock or inventory will last you. By using the IBP coverage function, you can first select 
your demand key figure, next your stock or inventory key figure, then the number of working days for the given time period, and then you can determine whether you want the coverage to begin in the current bucket or the next bucket. Next, if you want to consider zero stock being able to fulfill zero demand or not. And lastly, this just covers the calculation horizon. One thing to note when creating your new key figure is that <clears throat> the planning level for each of your key figures should be the same. So notice how I kept mine at week prod loc for both inventory, demand, and overall coverage of stock. And then I created another calculation at the request level for this new key figure. Once you've created this new key figure, you can go into Excel, pull up a new planning view, and I've included the stock on hand, the total demand output, and the stock coverage, this new key figure that we just created. So as you can see here, the total demand output was around 1500 for the next three calendar weeks. The stock on hand was about 4000 and using the stock coverage, we decided that starting in the next bucket, so starting in this week, it can cover this 4000 stock on hand can cover three more weeks. And you can see here that when the stock on hand changes to only 2000, it's only able to cover one week using that next, starting at that next bucket. This new IVP coverage functionality is great for planning future demand, future stock on hand, and initial inventories within different DCs. It's a lot more user friendly as opposed to trying to calculate this out yourself. You can go in and Use the simple functionality, input your demand and inventory, as opposed to creating a long nested function within Excel and having to constantly update it. The final 2008 IBP update that we will be talking about today is the location product substitution. This new functionality allows you to either substitute a product due to a promotion or have a product discontinuation. The first step in this new functionality is creating a new key figure. You can see here it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is sum it to get it to the request level and make sure you don't forget about including the unit of measure conversion factor. You can also create a substitution receipt or value key figure if those are other values um, and key figures that you'd like to keep track of alongside of the supply side of this substitution. Once you've created this new key figure, you can hop over to the master data within IBP. And you can see here in this example that we are trying to replace product complex A with product complex B. This next column tells us when this product substitution will end, so it says it will end next month, the very end of the month, um, Halloween. And this is a great example of a promotion. So it says, you know, let's say we're trying to add on new packaging. We want there to be bats and ghosts and pumpkins on this new packaging. Um, so this might be what product complex B is saying, and that's why we want it to end on Halloween. These other two reasons, soft and hard stop, are two ways of implementing this, this new product and substituting it out for the original product ID. A soft stop tells us that we can slowly ease into it or out of it. So if this new product is still available and we're trying to get rid of it past 1231 of this year, then we can still use some of it up. Afterwards. However, if you have a hard stop, this tells us that at this date and time, no, under no circumstances are we going to allow to be allowed to use this, this substitute product anymore. So no matter whether or not we have any product of it left, we're not using it anymore. We have to go back to this original product. 
So now once you've inputted this in your master data, you can save it, upload it, and then head over to your planning area or your planning view. And in here you can see this first section is the promotion product. This next one is just an example. And so you can see here that in the calendar weeks to come that with the two week lead time, this promotional product will have four weeks. So that month time that we set um, and it will have a higher dependent demand as opposed to the standard product, which is shown here in blue versus the promotional product, which is shown here in green. And you can see that the dependent demand of the original product has dropped a little bit by about 130 due to this new pickup in demand. This new location product substitution has helped made it a lot more user friendly for people to either implement product promotions or product discontinuations. You no longer have to go in and manually change a product. You can update this a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently using this new functionality.